Ray tracing is taking the world by storm in the last few years. But the thing is, researchers have been working on it for many decades now, and it still takes a lot of time and powerful hardware to render 3D animation scenes and run real-time ray tracing in video games. As one researcher in the field said it best, pretty soon computers will be fast enough. In today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how ray tracing works, why it's not the best rendering method, and why this race to photorealism will never end. To understand how ray tracing works, we first need to understand how light works in the real world. In everyday life, we have many sources that emit light, and this light finds its way to your eyes or digital cameras using various means, including refraction and reflection. And depending on the surface light interacts with, light is going to be reflected differently. For example, glossy surfaces reflect light in many directions, not just along the reflection direction, and diffuse or matte surfaces disperse light in a wider area. This is all fine and dandy, but the huge number of rays coming from light sources, which can be counted by billions, creates a huge problem for the process of rendering. So tracking such complex light transport quickly becomes overwhelming and can easily lead to an efficient rendering because more than 99% of light scattered in the scene is not gonna hit the camera, which sucks by the way. So to solve this problem and to create a rendered image, we just need the light passing through the camera's lens from a specific set of directions. Ray tracing researchers are smart, so they might as well think about a way to reduce the number of computations, which they did by the way. Basically, ray tracing in its various forms reverses the physical natural process, generating rays from the eyes in directions that we know will affect the image. So rays go out from each pixel of the camera to create a path which refers to a series of light object interactions that starts at the eye or the camera and ends at the light source. So, now I can't help it but think that Superman is the godfather of ray tracing because this guy sends rays from his eyes for a living. So as you can see, a ray goes off from each pixel of the camera to first hit our 3D object, then tries to find a direct path to the light source, which will then decide the color of the pixel on the screen. On the other hand, if the ray sent from the camera for example hits the table and then it is blocked by our 3D object on its way to the light source, then simply put, that particular point will be considered a shadow and will be represented on that pixel accordingly. But you also have to keep in mind that light rays react to materials differently. For example, if a ray is gonna hit a refractive material such as glass, it will first reflect in the direction of the light source, but there will be a secondary ray that is gonna be refracted with an angle inside the bottle of glass. That ray is gonna repeat the process by reflecting and the new ray is gonna refract out of the bottle and will try to reach the light source. This will create the effects of reflection and refraction that we usually see on such surfaces. We now have a general idea about how ray tracing works, but this creates a new problem. What kind of ray tracing is this and what about rasterization and path tracing? 